guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we will be talking about cancer of the appendix. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of cancers of the appendix, let's talk a little bit about what the appendix is. The appendix is a blind-ended tube connected to the cecum from which it develops in the embryo. The cecum is a pouch-like structure of the colon located at the junction of the small and large intestines. The human appendix averages about 9 cm in length but can range anywhere from between 2 to 20 cm. The function of the appendix is unknown. One theory is that the appendix acts as a storehouse for good bacteria rebooting our digestive system after diarrheal illnesses. Other experts believe the appendix plays a role in the immune system while others believe it is just a useless remnant from our evolutionary past. So if you look at my picture on the right, we have the cecum, which is the pouch-like structure, and then we have this blind-ended tube, which is the appendix that is attached to the cecum. So this is actually what the appendix looks like. And today we're just going to be discussing some cancers that occur at this point in the GI tract. Types of appendix cancer. Appendix cancer occurs when healthy cells in the appendix change and grow out of control. These cells form a growth of tissue called a tumor. The types of tumors that can start in the appendix include the carcinoid tumors, the appendiceal mucoceles, colonic type adenocarcinomas, signet ring cell adenocarcinomas, goblet cell carcinomas or adenocarcinoids, and the paragangliomas. So now let's take each of them and explain them further. The carcinoid tumors. A carcinoid tumor starts in the hormone producing cells that are normally present in small amounts in almost every organ in the body. An appendix carcinoid tumor most often occurs at the tip of the appendix. So if you look at my little structure here, you can see this is actually the tip of the appendix. You can see that tumor growing here. Approximately 50% of all appendix tumors are carcinoid tumors. So these are actually the most common type of appendix tumor. This type of cancer usually causes no symptoms until it has spread to other organ and often goes unnoticed. An appendix carcinoid tumor that remains confined to the area where it started has a high chance of successful treatment with surgery. So if the tumor remains confined to this little bit, it can be treated very well with surgical resection and the patient will go on being able to live a normal healthy life. Now let's talk about the appendiceal mucoceles. Mucoceles are swellings or sacs from swelling of the appendix wall. They are typically filled with mucus, hence the name mucoceles. There is a range of benign to malignant conditions that can occur in the appendix to form a mucoceal. Two of these conditions are mucosinus cyst adenomas and mucosinus cyst adenocarcinomas. Mucosinus cyst adenomas are benign and do not spread and they are similar to the adenomatous polyps that can develop in the colon. Mucosinus cyst adenocarcinomas can have similar effects with mucin in the abdomen but they are malignant meaning that they can spread to other parts of the body. The colonic type adenocarcinomas. The colonic type adenocarcinoma accounts for about 10% of appendix tumors and usually occur at the base of the appendix. So unlike the carcinoid tumors that usually occur at the tip of the appendix, these colonic type adenocarcinomas occur at the base of the appendix, so where the appendix attaches to the cecum. This type of cancer looks and behaves like most common type of colorectal cancer. It often goes unnoticed and a diagnosis is frequently made during or after surgery for appendicitis. So if you watched my video on appendicitis, you will remember that we said anything that causes a blockage in this tube, which is the appendix, this blind-ended tube, will cause an appendicitis first. So some common causes of appendicitis would be a fecalith which is a piece of hardened stool that blocks this tube-like structure that is the appendix, or it could even be cancer, a tumor that's growing there and is blocking it. So usually these patients suffer from an appendicitis caused by 
the presence of a tumor that's growing within the lumen of the appendix and they usually undergo surgery for the removal of the appendix to treat the appendicitis and after surgery upon inspection of the appendix the diagnosis of a colonic type adenocarcinoma can be made. Signet ring cell adenocarcinomas Signet ring cell adenocarcinomas are very rare and are considered to be more aggressive and more difficult to treat than other types of adenocarcinomas. It is called signet ring cell adenocarcinoma because under a microscope the cell looks like it has a signet ring inside it. So if you look at these little images where my arrow points you can see the presence of that signet ring sort of shape and hence the name signet ring cell adenocarcinoma. And on my right, I just put in this picture of the survival statistics in patients who are diagnosed with cancer of the appendix and their survival rate over the years after diagnosis. And you can see down here in this dark purplish color, we have the signet ring cell adenocarcinomas and they are actually the lowest survival rate. So this type of cancer is very aggressive and very difficult to treat. Goblet cell carcinomas or the adenocarcinoids. Goblet cell carcinomas have features of both adenocarcinomas and carcinoid tumors. They are more aggressive than the carcinoid tumors and treatment is of similar to the treatment for the adenocarcinomas. And finally, the paragangliomas. This is a rare tumor that develops from the cells of the paraganglia, a collection of cells that come from nerve tissue that persist in small deposits after fetal, which means pre-birth development. This type of tumor is usually considered benign and is often successfully treated with the complete surgical removal of the tumor. So now that we've gone over all the types of cancers that can occur at the level of the appendix, let's talk about some signs and symptoms that these patients may incur. As we discussed earlier, these patients may suffer from an appendicitis. They may also suffer from ascites, which is fluid buildup in the abdomen, bloating, pain in the abdomen or pelvic area, and increased girth, which means size of the waistline, with or without protrusion of the navel, which is the belly button, changes in bowel function, and infertility. So how can one put a diagnosis of an appendix cancer? In addition to the physical exam, the following tests may be used to diagnose appendix cancer. Biopsy. A biopsy is the removal of a small amount of tissue for examination under a microscope. Computer tomography, which is a CT or a CAT scan. A CT scan creates a three-dimensional picture of the inside of the body using x-rays from different angles. A computer then combines these images into a detailed cross-sectional view that shows any abnormalities or tumors. Magnetic Resonance Imaging, or MRI. An MRI uses magnetic fields, not x-rays, to produce detailed images of the body. An ultrasound. An ultrasound uses sound waves to create a picture of the internal organs. Radionuclide scanning, or the Octario scan. This test is used for carcinoid tumors and not other types of appendix cancers. A small amount of radioactive, hormone-like substance that is attracted to the carcinoid tumor is injected into a vein. A special camera is then used to show where the radioactive substance accumulates. Treatment of appendix cancers. Surgery. In this procedure, the removal of the tumor and some surrounding healthy tissue is done during an operation. The different types of surgeries include an appendectomy, a hemicolectomy, or the removal of the peritoneum. Chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is another procedure that can be done. Here, different drugs are used to destroy cancer cells. These drugs usually stop the cancer cell's ability to grow and divide. The methods of chemo include systemic chemotherapy, local or intraperitoneal chemotherapy. Radiation therapy. Radiation therapy is a last treatment option. Here, High-powered energy x-rays or other particles are used to destroy the cancer cells. Radiation therapy is rarely used in the treatment of appendix cancer. However, sometimes it may be used to treat a particular area in which the cancer is spread to, such as the bone. 
And that brings us to the end of this video on cancers of the appendix. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video very informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And if you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.